Watch enthusiasts, we are fascinating creatures. We are both simple and complex individuals. We all have a, a similar mindset, I think that's fair to say. We look at the vast field of pieces on offer and we choose what we like best. And we have many rational reasons why it is the ideal choice. But at the core, what makes us interesting as individuals is we have a very discerning eye. I think that's something we all share, that at a moment's notice we know when something is good and when something deserves better. Now, along with the wishes and dreams that we have had for a long time, like watch brands offering serious discounts again, or Rolex being available at retail, pipe dreams, right? Another wish that has almost always been the case that we want the 50 fathoms in a size smaller than 45 millimeters. And now that it's here, it doesn't seem like the enthusiast is going mad. In fact, nobody seems to be talking about the 42 millimeter 50 fathoms. And if we're being honest with ourselves, there are more than a few reasons why. The 50 Fathoms has been with us for 70 years. That is a statement in itself. Whether great marketing, visionary ideas, or both, Blancpain and the brand that it has transitioned into being today owes its legacy to this machine. And since the early 2000s, when the 50 Fathoms was given a facelift, the mainline model was only offered in one size, 45 millimeters. And it's been that way ever since. And sort of like Henry Ford, when he was talking about the Model T, he would say, you can have this car in any color you like, as long as it's black. And I think, I think that's the quote. I'm not even going to research it, spitballing here. We know the drill by now, the watches we have been pining after from Blancpain, a smaller size 50 fathoms, not a limited edition, and offered at a decent price. And the truth is we have never received them until Swatch stepped in. The craze somehow crept up. It took some of Blancpain's designs off the table and they gave us the Swatch Scuba. And here's the conundrum we're facing. We are now in a very strange position because Blancpain has released a new 50 Fathoms, now in 42 millimeters, that is somehow playing catch up behind the Swatch release. And as a result, it has diluted the potency of this new piece. And so we are left asking the question, with a release such as this, which is pretty significant, make no mistake, we have waited, what, 10 years for at this point? Is it too little, too late? When I think back to the countless limited editions we have seen from the brand, it's a surprise to think it has taken them this long to bring the watches down to a more manageable size. And maybe it's because of things like fatigue. Maybe it's because Blancpain isn't selling 45 millimeter divers like they used to. Maybe it's due to the success of the Swatch collaboration or considering that so many other models under the Swatch group are offered primarily at 42 millimeters and under. And yes, we can debate the size scenario of dive watches. Speaking as an individual here, someone who has a fairly average near to seven inch wrist with a bit of diving experience, 42 millimeters is the perfect size for a dive watch for me. It's not too big to get caught up on anything while you're using it and it's not too small to be illegible in the water. And if your wrist is in that eight inch territory, then 44 to 45 millimeters is an optimal choice. I think the one main component people get wrong is they don't often make that distinction between whether or not they're going to be using a dive watch for its intended purpose or not. Many of us are in that fortunate position to own a few divers of different sizes. 39 to 41 might be a better choice for you as an easy grab and go as a daily wearer, while the 42 millimeter might be used for your trip to the sea or to the pool. Variety is the spice of life, take it from me. But a lot of us would agree that a 42 millimeter dive watch would be far more practical as a day-to-day -day wearer compared to a 42, at least for most wrists. And it seems that the spin that Blancpain has put on this new model is that it's scaled down to make it more wearable. Now the reality is these new 42 millimeter variants, they are not reinventing the wheel. They are genuinely the same old models that have lost three millimeters in diameter, but they still retain almost all of the design cues of the 45 millimeter original. And I ask myself, just looking back a year ago to the 70th anniversary pieces that arrived, the act one, two, and three, why were none of these cues transferred over into the new range? Could they have not injected something else to make this collection a bit more exciting? The act one, in my humble opinion, it's perfect. It's perfect to the last detail. Why wasn't this handset chosen? Why wasn't the typeface changed? And maybe that is the root cause. Maybe that is why there has been no fuss put up about the new 42 millimeter 50 fathoms. There hasn't been mass circulation or anything like that. And I mean, people, this is the 50 fathoms we're talking about. It's now finally at a wearable size with great tech, the same 1315 movement with 120 hour power reserve. This is what we've been asking for, right? 
Anybody? Nobody? Oh well. You see, I think the lack of major reception around this has been twofold. One, because they haven't given us anything exciting to talk about. You know, like I said, changed a line of text. Added another color. Did someone say, Seamaster Seaweed Green? Yeah, man. I mean, I would go mad for this watch. So naturally, the interest in an entirely new watch that looks exactly the same isn't going to be that high, right? It's ironic because some of the big names know how to do it and they pull it off every single time. Where Blancpain used to compete with Rolex, they're not on the same page anymore. And the thing is, these are terrific watches. This is high horology we're discussing. Many would argue that they are far better watches than a typical Rolex Submariner. And I would agree that the design is more original, it's more interesting, I'm also biased because I love Arabic numerals on a dial. And frankly, I prefer the history and the story of the 50 Fathoms. And it's also because we knew this one was coming, price. The price of these pieces has and always will be hard to swallow at retail. Granted now they're in titanium and the premium can increase more, but even still, for a titanium watch with a rubber strap that goes down 300 meters, it's a hard pill. Another issue that the purists will point out is that its thickness is 14 millimeters. For a 300 meter dive watch, it's unnecessary. And I guess if we're really splitting hairs, we look at a watch like the Pelagos FXD. Same diameter, 42 millimeters, 22 mil lug width. That's maybe a quarter of the price of this piece on the secondhand market. That watch measures in the ballpark of 12 and a half millimeters thick. So as much as there are many pros to the 42 millimeter 50 fathoms, a watch I would love to own myself, they are an equal amount of cons. In my case, it's looking at it and saying that the design is not being adventurous. It's not trying to do anything different. It's playing it safe. And I think to debut the 42 millimeter 50 fathoms, a bit more effort should have been put in here. Adding to that is its thickness, which you can either love or hate. And then of course it's the price. I don't think the majority are compelled to chase after a watch like this, where there are a slew of 42 millimeter divers offered by Swatch Group for a far more attainable price, much better value for money. I would even go so far to say that the Seamaster 300 is a far better value proposition and one that I think you would get even more enjoyment out of. And it's questioning things like, has this Swatch release diluted the potency of the 50 Fathoms name? But make no mistake, from now until the end of time, this watch has always been the aspirational diver. It's one that many pursue in the hope that it will finish off a collection. And in many situations it does. But I just think at this time, a release such as this feels like too little too late. That if Blancpain had done this five or six years ago, can you imagine the impact it would have had? Without question, Blancpain has some of the most beautiful and original dive watch designs in the world. And it's just something that the brand is not capitalizing on. I still hang on that hope that we are going to see scaled down 40 millimeter divers offered in their collection. A reincarnation of some of these brilliant designs that give you that unique selling point that we all want. So why is it that nobody is talking about the 42 millimeter 50 fathoms? Plenty of reasons. What are your thoughts on this range? What do you think they could have done differently? I would like to know. And until then, thank you as always for taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next one.